Hi, my name is Ryan Nelson and welcome to another quarantine special of Kook Cinema Reviews. Today, me and some of our other reviewers will be taking a look at our favorite animated shows and movies on Netflix. With that said, let's jump right into it. My first pick would have to be One Punch Man. If you're looking for a serious, mature, intense anime, this isn't it. This is a prime example of a hilarious anime. The story follows Saitama, the One Punch Man, who, as the name suggests, only requires one punch in order to defeat anyone or anything standing in his way. In a world filled with monsters and superheroes, Saitama can't help but feel intensely bored by the fact that he defeats everyone instantly. The dry humor of Saitama, followed by the overly dramatic and compelling side characters, makes this show a must-watch for anime fans as well as non-anime fans. Alright, I swear my next pick is not as weird as it looks or sounds. I swear. The Disastrous Life of Psyche K is perhaps one of the best anime I have ever watched. Psyche K is secretly a psychic with seemingly limitless power living the life of a normal high schooler. Psyche cannot control his ability to read minds, and therefore, he always knows what everyone is thinking around him all of the time. Because of this, he makes friends with the strangest and unlikeliest of people. I love this show so much, because it can take a scenario as simple as trying to get home to see your favorite show on time and dial it up to 11, to a very comedic effect. If you can just get over how weird this show looks and sounds, and just click play, I guarantee you will love the disastrous life of Psyche K. That's it for me. Hey guys, my name is Brittany Lau and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of my favorite animated series on Netflix. The first being Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Now we're all familiar with how Scooby-Doo works. The gang travels to some spooky location. They set out to solve the mystery. They get into some hijinks along the way. And at the end, they unmask the practical culprit of the episode. This rendition takes that formula and uses it, but flips it into something that's completely unique and unexpected. I mean, when you have a franchise that spans well over 50 years, and counting, you're gonna have a wide array of adaptations. What's interesting about the approach in this adaptation is that rather than having the plot wrapped up in each episode, now we have an overarching series plot, which we don't typically see in Scooby-Doo. Also, rather than following the gang to different locations, we're now settled into one consistent location, which happens to be their hometown, Crystal Cove. This makes things really interesting for the viewer because now we're introduced to their parents, their home life. We're offered much more insight to their personal lives. Now the cast consists of a lot of familiar voices and legends of various Scooby-Doo works. Most notably, we have Frank Welker reprising his iconic role as Fred Jones, Matthew Lillard as Shaggy Rogers, which is incredible because we also have Casey Kasem, the original voice of Shaggy, voicing his father. Now this version of the show is a little darker than its predecessors. I am not joking there is an actual body count in this series, which completely took me by surprise. I think that added some edge and maturity to the series, which I loved. And I think that any adult who's possibly interested in checking this out would be pleasantly surprised. So the next show I want to talk about is We Bear Bears. This is a Cartoon Network animated series that follows the life of three very unique bear siblings as they attempt to integrate with the human world in the San Francisco Bay Area. We have our main characters, Grizz, a grizzly bear, who is the outspoken and charismatic leader of the group. Panda, a panda bear, who is obsessed with his social media presence, falls in love with girls way too easily, and is a notable anime and overall Asian culture fan. And finally, my personal favorite, Ice Bear, a polar bear who is arguably the more mature out of the three, naturally monotone and inexpressive, and an impressive survivalist in most cases, they are not hard to distinguish at all. <laughs> you know, like these characters are so unique 
and although they tend to bicker at times, like siblings do, they always manage to come back together as a family. I love seeing the three of them get wrapped up into trouble, especially when they don't mean to, because their silly antics are just so amusing to watch. One of my favorite aspects of the show is that some of the episodes actually feature the bears when they were younger, and it's just so cute to see how they were as kids and how they managed to survive on their own. Some of the episodes can pull at the heartstrings at times, but I think it only adds to the heartwarming experience. This is truly a wholesome show that I I think anyone can enjoy so I highly recommend that you check it out because it's truly one of my favorites. Hello my name is Daniel Jackson and the two animated shows on Netflix I would like to recommend are Dora Hetero and Baki. Dora Hetero is a series about an amnesiac reptilian headed man named Kaiman along with his friend Nakaido trying to find out his identity in a gritty and violent world. Dora Hetero is one of my new favorite series of this past year and it's an adaptation of a manga of the same name. After finishing the animated series, I went on and read the manga and I have it near the top of my favorite works of fiction of all time. The character development is one of the highlights of the show for me. You get thrown into the world of humans in the city called Hole and the lane of sorcerers who effectively terrorize the humans in the series. While there are factions of humans and sorcerers, you got to care about the characters on both sides as they each have their own worlds and goals they seek to accomplish. The one main thing about Dora Hetero is the amount of violence. It is pretty violent and while that doesn't bother me too much, it could bother some people, so take that as a warning. The overall art and soundtrack to the show provide a whimsical vibe which contrasts a darker setting and is extremely well done. Each character has a very distinct design to them, and every character is strong and able to kick ass too. Even the female characters are more ripped than some of the male characters in the world. It's also a surprisingly wholesome show. There is humor throughout, even though it's largely gritty and violent. It isn't a show that will really make you sad. It has a very odd tone to it that you need to watch to understand. In the end, I will 100% recommend Dora Hetero to anyone I know who needs a new show to binge. It's only 12 episodes, it doesn't take long at all to get through. Just gotta hope they'll make a season two. Give it a try. You might be shocked at how much you like it. The next show I'll recommend is Baki. While I went on and on about how in depth and the amount of substance there is in Dora Hetero, I won't be doing the same for Baki. The best summary for it is if you like shows about fighting, you'll probably love Baki. The main plot of the show is following Baki Hanma and his quest to try and get stronger while chasing in the footsteps of his father, Yuchiro Hanma, also known as the strongest creature in history. I really love this show because the story is just the background. It's all about people just beating the shit out of each other. The way they dive into the variety of martial arts techniques throughout the show is one of the highlights for me. You can really tell how much detail the original manga author put into describing each fighter's styles and moves, even if some of them seem a little unrealistic. The one off-putting thing for a lot of people is the character design for this show. The original author of the manga put a ton of emphasis on the musculature design of characters and the size of them. It's pretty overblown. And they keep that same detail in the show. In the clips of the show that will be overlaid while I talk about it, you'll get a good, dis good sense of design and whether you'll like it or not. One thing you need to know, though, is that it's a continuation of an older Baki series made back in 2001. You don't have to go back and watch the original to get the new series. They cover a lot of the characters and introduce them using flashbacks and they reanimate scenes from the old series. Overall, I would highly recommend Baki if you want something with a lot of fighting in it. There are 26 episodes in season one and 13 in season two, an easy binge compared to other shows. And that's it for my Netflix animated recommendations. I'm Daniel Jackson, and I hope you give at least one of them a try. Hi, I'm Isaiah. And I'm here to talk about this Netflix original animated show called The Midnight Gospel. The Midnight Gospel is co-created by Pendleton Ward, the creator of Adventure Time, and a comedian named Duncan Drussell. All of these episodes come from the interviews done by Duncan himself, and the show centers around a character named Clancy, who owns an unlicensed multiverse simulator, which he uses to go into different worlds and interview people. However, it becomes more of a means of escapism when he goes on these interviews as he avoids everything that's going on in his own world. There's only 8 episodes and almost all of them are less than 30 minutes, so it's a very bingeable series. You could probably watch it all within a day, and I think if you're into stuff similar to Adventure Time or something that'll make you think, this show is definitely the one for you. One of my favorite things about this show is its animation. Like, oh my goodness, it is breathtaking. Pendleton Ward really does outdo himself in this show. And I gotta say that a lot of the animation is reminiscent of Adventure Time. Like, although it looks 
somewhat simple. There are so many breathtaking moments in the show and they're just so visually appealing. Like you could have this show on mute and it'll just look awesome by itself. Another thing that I really loved about this show is how well it sewed in with the interviews Duncan had. Some episodes, they kind of missed the landing and the stories aren't really that related to the, uh, the interview, but they do a pretty good job at sewing together the interviews with the episodes overall meaning and story arc. My favorite thing about this series is Clancy's character development. He begins as a very self-centered kind of character, but as he begins to learn more and more lessons throughout his interviews, he becomes a more mature person and he begins to view the world in a wider and more accepting perspective. My favorite episode is the final episode. Now the final episode is an interview Duncan has with his late mother who died in 2013. And in the show, Clancy, his own mom, has died of cancer. So it's a very emotional episode and the perspective of both Duncan and Clancy as a character. And it's a very, very great climax to the entire series. And it really does culminate into Clancy growing up to being a more mature person. No, no, this, I know this transfigure. I know, I know, I know, but come on. There's no way to stop the heartbreak. How do you, what do you do about that? You cry. You cry. If you're not gonna watch this series, at least watch the final episode. It is breathtaking in every single way possible. I love the philosophical conversations that they had throughout each and every single interview. And he goes really in depth on a lot of topics such as life or death, spirituality, our spiritual beings on a spiritual plane, and just a lot of other things that you may or may not have thought about. And I hope you guys are having a great summer. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Hello everyone, my name is Honey Reverino and today I will be reviewing my favorite animated movie on Netflix. But before we get into that, I want to mention a show that a lot of people have watched, but I watched it for the first time this summer that I completely fell in love with. So I don't know, this show is really underground. I don't know if you guys heard it actually. It's called Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm pretty sure most people know what Avatar The Last Airbender is, but if you don't, let me just recap. Avatar The Last Airbender tells the story of young Aang, who is an avatar, who has to master all four elements and beat the Fire Lord Ozai. And that sounds pretty straightforward, but the show is just, you know, Aang going on this journey with his friends and going through a lot of things and it's really action-packed, adventure, it's funny, it's great, okay? I love Avatar The Last Airbender so much. I think it's genius and my favorite character would have to be Sokka. I think Sokka is really underrated, but you know, you gotta give it to the guy. He came up with most of the plans and also Sokka was so funny. Every time he came on screen, there was just something to laugh at, but it wasn't like laughing at him. It was laughing with him, you know? Overall, I think Avatar is a really beautiful show. I think it has a lot of commentary that is really relevant and really powerful. I think the writing's great. I think the character relationships are amazing. And if you've already seen Avatar, why not watch it again? And if you haven't, you're missing out and you need to watch it. But yes, my favorite movie on Netflix that is also animated and it's also one of my favorite movies of all time is called My Life as a Zucchini. My Life as a Zucchini tells the story of young Ikario who goes by the nickname of Zucchini as he is placed into an orphanage after his mother's death. In this coming of age story, Zucchini learns how to love and forgive while making valuable friendships that shape him in many different ways. What drew me to watch My Life as a Zucchini for the first time was the art style. The movie, it's stop motion, first of all, putting that out there. Uh, it has a really unique art style. There's a lot of vibrant colors. The character design is really playful and cute. Um, and yeah, the art style is really beautiful. And I think it's like really unique how there's this contrast between vibrant colors, happy colors, this playful, again, character design, and a really bittersweet story. Because the story does follow Zucchini after he goes through tragic events, and he is trying to get used to his new life and open up to people again. So there's a lot of things going on in my life with Zucchini. I think it's a, I think it's a very beautiful story. Um, not only is the art style great, but the character development throughout the film is amazing. 
and you know if you haven't watched it I definitely recommend it there's so much in this movie it's really bittersweet but in the end I think it's really worth it and check it out I'm sure you guys won't regret it but that's it for me and for this video thank you guys so much for watching I hope you all take our recommendations into consideration make sure to leave a like subscribe comment down below hope everyone's staying safe and we'll see you guys soon